I'm very excited to introduce our next speaker, been a partner of FIU's for quite a bit of time. Marion Merritt is Deputy Director at NICE and leads industry outreach for the NICE community. So please join me in welcoming Ms. Marion Merritt. Wow, hi everybody, good morning. All right, so as we begin, I need you all to hum in your head Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue because as somebody with over a million miles flown with United, I tend to hear it in my sleep at this point, and perhaps you do as well. Anyway, our keynote speaker this morning is the wonderful Deneen DiFiore, and she serves as the Vice President and Chief Information Security Officer for United Airlines. Interesting bit of trivia. I'm always interested in what people's names mean. Um, the name Deneen means chieftain, chieftain. So she was recognized from birth as having leadership qualities. Um, and her route to a career in cybersecurity was like many of us, a little bit of a circuitous path. Previously, she was working on her master's degree in healthcare management. So today, today Deneen is responsible for leading the cybersecurity and digital risk organization to ensure the company is prepared to prevent, detect, and respond to evolving cyber threats. She leads initiatives on commercial aviation cyber safety risk, improving cyber resilience, and she represents United working with their international partners to reduce cyber safety risk worldwide across the aviation ecosystem. In 2022, she was appointed to serve on the President's National Infrastructure Advisory Council, NIAC. And there she advises the White House on how to reduce physical and cyber risks and improve the security and resilience of the nation's critical infrastructure sectors. Please give your warmest and best NICE conference welcome to Deneen DiFiore. Well, hello everybody, good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and to speak to you all. Um, I know you share the same passion and enthusiasm for developing a uh, strong and educated and secure, survivor, uh, uh, resilient cybersecurity workforce. So today I'm going to tell you a little, about, little bit about my journey um, as a cybersecurity professional. And we titled this talk, um, A Journey with Des uh, No Destination, kind of a pun on the aviation sector and travel industry that I've, I've been part of for the past 20-some 20, 20 years. But also, if you think about cybersecurity, it's such a dynamic field. It changes and evolves every day. And one day, you think you're here and you're on this path. And the next day, you wake up, and it's a whole different, uh, different journey and different, um, different pathway. So I think it's an appropriate, uh, appropriate uh, title to, to, uh, to talk about today. So um, as mentioned in my introduction, I didn't set out with a uh, goal, career aspiration, to be a, a CISO at, at, at a, uh, in any capacity. I actually didn't even start out in technology or computer science or engineering. I went to school and um, I, was in, uh, I was a biology major. I had aspirations of becoming a doctor or a pharmacist or maybe even um, as, a, as I got uh, through my um, education, a, a uh, hospital administrator or something to, uh, someone that would run healthcare organizations on the business side. While I was uh, doing my master's I, um, in healthcare administration and management, there was a big shift at that time to move from um, paper-based medical records and paper-based processes to automated uh, platforms. And I was part of the team that was um, going to be doing that in an organization. And I really was just like so enthused about the way technology could make um, processes more efficient, more effective, and I just kind of latched on to that. So as I was doing my master's, I kind of was like, hey, you know what, this technology thing is probably a better fit for me. This is what makes me you know, excited and happy and I'm you know, learning new things every day than kind of running the day-to-day -day operations of, a, of an organization. So I ended up switching um, my focus and going into uh, technology. So I you know, got, a, got a job right after school um, 
in a healthcare organization where I was training on systems and teaching healthcare professionals how to use uh, automation and things like that. It was really, really um, an interesting um, job. And I was using my, I'll say my um, education background and my experiences that I've had within that domain to, to foster and advance technology in that field. So I felt like, you know, I, I, I felt comfortable, even though it was early in my career, that I had a little bit of uh, specialized knowledge in that space, even though I didn't have, um, even didn't have a computer science degree or an engineering degree or an IT degree at that time. Um, so you know, I felt comfortable doing that. But as I, as I, you know, did that for a few years, I got a little bit more ambitious. I would say um, there was a lot at that time. Um, you know, that was back in back uh, 20 some years ago. There was the whole e-business boom, right? So the internet was kind of taking over everything. Everybody was going to sell everything on the internet. It was going to be, uh, you know, the the whole kind of e-commerce economy. Um, there was a. Uh, I was based in Cincinnati, Ohio. I still live in Cincinnati, Ohio today. And um, GE Aviation was based in Cincinnati, Ohio. Their headquarters were there. The um, the. There was a big hiring fair. There was, uh, you know, they were going to be like, it was like the e-business boom. They were bringing in a bunch of people. I remember going in, to, you know, I remember saying, okay, I'm going to do this. If I can do this, if I can do technology in healthcare, I can do technology in another field. Why not? So I remember going into the, um, the career fair or the job fair, and there were like 100 people in one room, and we're all looking at each other like, okay, are we interviewing for the same job? Um, what's going on, you know? And there were a lot of folks that were, uh, had engineering degrees and had computer science degrees, and here was me. So talk about imposter syndrome and kind of feeling like, you, you, you know, I'm like, why am I here? I, what am I doing? Um, but I, I went through with it. Uh, I made an impression, right? Again, those transferable skills around um, showing that kind of that, that grit and that um, passion and understanding to move and learn, um, I think was probably a differentiator for me. I ended up getting the job at GE Aviation and had a lot of a, a good career, a good run um, in different technology, uh, I'll say domains across the organization. I did infrastructure management. I, uh, I taught myself how to code at that point because I didn't know how to code. So I figured if I, uh, if I could um, you know, learn a little bit more about the people, the, a little bit more about the skill sets and the, uh, the capabilities that the community of people that I was working in, I would be set myself up for success. So you know, I ordered a bunch of books off uh, uh, um, uh, Amazon, checked them out. You know, at that time, checked them out at the library, actually physical books, and, and read and learned and, and taught myself how to do things that I, I needed to do. So you know, I spent several years going through, um, going through that process and gaining different domain skills. If there was an opportunity that, um, you know, that I, I thought about, that I was like, that looks interesting, I raised my hand. And even though I didn't, you know, again, um, GE is a, very tech, it was a, is a very technical company, lots of engineering um, uh, disciplines and majors and, um, and experiences, I still raised my hand and took that because I knew that I could, I could learn. And I think, you know, as we get to kind of the, the, the further end of the story, it, that is a theme here. Um, because of the cybersecurity workforce, uh, I'll say shortage and crisis that we're in with the, uh, this, I didn't catch the statistics of the previous speaker, but there's, you know, there's a lot of open jobs to do a little bit of uh, qualified uh, candidates. We have to be opening the aperture much, much more and hiring on potential, hiring on um, uh, the availability of transferable skills as well, too. And when I reflect back around my career, you know, getting from healthcare to technology, I, you know, that's what I did. I realized that's what I did. I, I used everything that I thought I could, I could um, be successful at, and I learned and I honed my skills and gathered more skills and was able to move um, in the tra trajectory that I needed to. So being a technologist for a few years, um, I would say back in around 2010-ish, um, that because like I think when the world started to be a little bit more, I'll say aware of cybersecurity in the sense that uh, it's not a, you know, 
networking, the network team and the IT infrastructure team, you know, managing firewalls. There were things that were happening, like there was, you know, WikiLeaks that was uh, 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 attention, um, get, got attention. There was uh, uh, Twitter had a big breach, if you remember that. Uh, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase had a had a huge breach that people were starting to be like, what is the cyber thing that is going on? Um, so. What happened when I was in my role, I was um, in a technology role. I was a CIO of a smaller P&L uh, business unit at uh, GE Energy at that time. So uh, I was um, you know, doing my thing, you know, implementing ERP systems, CRM systems, all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, there, was a, there was a knock at our door. One of the three-letter agencies from the US government had said, hey, your data is in the hands of uh, a country and a nation state and, and a threat actor that it shouldn't be. And, you know, lo and behold, um, I kind of got my transition into cyber because of that. It was interesting because um, I was at GE Energy. I had I'd been at GE Aviation and I switched to a, the, the company, um, um, uh, it's the GE Energy company. And I was a very small PL. I had nothing to do with like national security issues. I wasn't developing systems or technology or anything like that for, for uh, the military or any defense systems. But again, at that time, you know, back at 2010, networks were flat. There wasn't a lot of uh, segmentation and high-powered, you know, advanced capabilities for, um, um, you know, protection and detection and things like that. So for my tiny P&L that sold motors, like industrial motors, was the reason that uh, the GE company had an issue with, uh, with some more serious kind of data that uh, the government was concerned about. So I had to jump into cybersecurity whether I liked it or not. So during that process of going through that incident and understanding kind of the, cyber, the landscape of cybersecurity, the, the, the potential for cyber, to, cyber risk to impact a business and orga, organization and national security was really eye-opening to me. I took that opportunity and kind of never looked back then. I was like, wow, this is amazing that um, technology could be used in a way that that we have not thought about before. And that, um, that is something that stuck with me. So I made the transition into cyber because of that, that incident. I started um, to build up the program at GE. Um, we had a great cyber program over the years, and they still do. And then I you know, went back to GE Aviation, which is kind of where my passion and my heart is. I love, uh, I love the business there, and um, was the CISO there. Just being, you know, I wouldn't say just being a CISO, because being a CISO is a, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> get, uh, trust me there. But being a CISO is not just around um, having the enterprise technology, the protection of the enterprise technology. It's understanding the business and goals and, and, and aligning your risk posture so you can make sure that the business is protected across its whole portfolio. So I was able in that role to come in and you know, not just leverage my technology background, but also pick up things like, okay, what's the business strategy? Where are we operating? What are the risks? What are we doing from a mergers and acquisitions perspective? And then really move into more of a business um, focus and aligning my team to securing those business outcomes. So I was able to get a much more broader scope in the role of, uh, of CISO and took on things like um, you know, our, our uh, business development efforts and risk management there, data protection, um, insider threat, and even product security. So making sure that our, the product that we were developing, engines and avionics systems and things like that, were secure and hardened against cyber threats. And then lo and behold, I uh, was able to uh, take that experience and move into a different, um, similar but different sector uh, in United Airlines. So I've been there for about four and a half years and was able to leverage my experience as an, OE, as an original um, um, equipment manufacturer to you know, the, the customer that used that product. So again, I really think as, you, as we all think about how to solve the cybersecurity workforce uh, conundrum that we're in, it's really about looking for that potential and those transferable skills because that makes a difference. Even in cybersecurity, if you're the most technical 
person. You're the best reverse malware engineer in the world. That is all well and good. Is that great? That is great. We need those core competencies and capabilities, but to understand why you're doing it and in the context of what you're doing, um, what you're doing to protect that business is makes such a difference. So I really think um, as we look at this, uh, you know. The, the context of what we, how we operate and those transferable skills and having people that can make those transitions is going to be a key um, as, we, as we move forward and gain uh, more capability, competency, and um, individuals in the cybersecurity workforce. So, you know, I've been at United for four and a half years now. It's been a great ride. It's still a journey with no destination. I actually joined United um, six weeks before kind of the world shut down mid-March in 2020. So great time to start a career at an airline, right, when uh, no one wants to fly. Um, and <laughs> was able to pick up a lot of skills during that time because it was r right into crisis management. I had an idea of, you know, what I was going to do. I was going to come in. We were going to make the program, you know, a lot more capable. We were going to advance our capabilities. We were going to do all this great, fancy, sexy stuff. And then I was you know, thrown into, okay, well, we don't even know if this airline is going to be, you know, like, we don't know if the airline industry is going to even be here tomorrow. What are we going to do? And then we weren't allowed in the offices, right? And everybody, we couldn't, con we couldn't interact with our customers. So shifting that whole cybersecurity model to manage risk in that perspective was, um, gosh, that was, uh, that was, a. Uh, that, that was, uh, I'm still on that journey, right? <laughs> I probably still have a little bit of a, like post-traumatic stress disorder from that journey, but, um, it, but it's been great. Um, and I always say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So, you know, I am loving my role at United Airlines. Hopefully you all um, are, you know, are familiar with us and fly us and have great experiences. But as we lean into digital, and we're leaning into digital more and more, where we have an award-winning mobile app and we have a lot of featured functionality, you're going to see a lot more... Uh, capability and um, um, and really build us building digital trust with our customers as well because that's what I think the next uh, thing is. But hopefully, um, as I described, kind of my journey again, still with no destination. I don't know what's next for me tomorrow either, but I'm just going to keep on <laughs> keep on trying and keep on um, trying to understand how I can uh, continue to evolve, uh, gain additional skill sets and context and understanding to make sure that I'm protecting United. Um, that I'm working within the ecosystem of aviation, and also, you know, advocating and um, and helping um, the larger cybersecurity industry uh, get where we need to be. So, with that, I want to thank you all, and I think we're going to transition to our panel. So, I will hand it over to uh, the next uh, group of folks to introduce us. Thank you.